Hello there. It is Monday, November 29th of 2021. New day and a new episode of Student of the Last Days. If you don't mind, could we do a little opening monologue here? Yes, I've heard... This has come up often enough. It's time to just tackle it. I've heard from the date setters. As you know, I, I haven't changed one iota from what I said in one of the early episodes about no man knows the day or the hour. We can narrow it down to the season, but we're, well, I tell you what, I just don't think it's a good idea to set dates. I never have. I don't set dates. I don't like date setting. I think the potential for uh, deception for letting one's guard down when we should be watching. There's a reason Christ kept waking the apostles, the, uh, the apostles, the apostles up saying, can't you guys stay awake for even one hour? Did that or did that not happen? Well, yes, in, indeed, it did happen. And it happened for a reason. It's for our benefit. When we get in this season, and I do believe we are in this season of the appearance of Antichrist. I'm not setting a date. I'm not even saying it's in 2021. I had a strong feeling that it could be, but I don't know that for sure. And I've never said that, that I'm convinced 100% sure. I do say I believe we're in the season, and I still believe that. Uh, we know from Scripture there was one week of Daniels, which is seven years. There's one week left to be fulfilled. We had the 69 weeks, the first advent of Christ, his crucifixion, resurrection, return, ascension back to heaven, followed by Pentecost Day, which was a type of the witnessing that will happen on the Holy Spirit spoke through the apostles, those witnesses, to the crowd, and they all heard it in their own native language, the dialect of the county that they were born in. What a miracle. No babbling about it. The miracle was they understood it in their own language, their own dialect. And that's going to happen again at the end. When the, the elect, the set-aside ones, the saints, if you will, which is what that saint means, the set-aside ones that did not and will not bow a knee to Baal because of the grace of our Heavenly Father, who said, I've reserved unto myself 7,000 men that will not bow a knee to Baal. It can be women, too. I'm, I must say that. When it says men, there's really no gender in that. Human people that will not bow a knee to, to Baal. 7,000. Does that mean it's exactly 7,000? I don't know. It's, it's a number to be compared to the 144,000 that are sealed. Remember, some of them go astray at first, but when they hear the testimony, the book of Ezekiel is one place to, to reconcile that. that uh, some of them go astray at first. They kind of fall for it. Uh, they, was looking to, they was looking to escape. They was looking to fly away. But when the testimony went out, they woke up and realized, oh, this isn't Jesus. This is the anti-Jesus, the Antichrist. Yeah, it is. And here's the testimony, just like it's written. And it's happening, just like it's written. And they wake up and repent in time, thank, thank God. In time, they wake up and realize they went astray. I am very aware of the year 2029 being, I've seen the chronological chart. I'll show you in a minute why I don't think that means anything. Both in Matthew and Mark, Christ told us, and I will document this in here in a moment. For the sake of the very elect, I have shortened the days, or else no flesh could be saved. If this uh, jab is what I believe that it is, it's got all the earmarks. It's got all the qualifications. Uh, if it's the mark of the beast, and I do believe that it is, we're already hearing the mandates, and you can't do this, you can't do that without it. Mm-hmm. Sounds familiar to me. Uh, 
It can't drag on to 2029 if that's the case. Why? Because no flesh could be saved. Everybody's going to have to get it by then. If it drug on and on, because they're not letting this go. It's new variant after new variant, jab after jab after jab after jab. They're not letting this go. It's not just going to go away and things aren't just going to go back to normal. I'm a realist. And that's the real conditions on the ground on this earth at this period of time. So there's another reason. Christ told us, I, Behold, I come at an hour that you think not. In the Old Testament it says that the plowman, there's going to be a time when the plowman, get this, the plowman overtakes the reaper. And the sower of the seed, the, uh, pardon me, the treader of the grapes would overtake the sower of the seed. So the seasons kind of get flipped, which goes along with, I come in an hour, you think not. Okay, be prepared. It may not be exactly when we're thinking. For the longest time, I thought this May through September would probably catch the whole thing. I'm not so sure of that now, especially as I continue to study. I admit, I'm not so sure of that. The reaper overtakes the plowman, and the treader of grapes overtakes the sower of the seeds. It sounds like an inversion to me. Harvest, there's going to be a time when harvest doesn't come exactly when we think, well, not right when we're expecting it, which goes along with what Christ taught. So the days were shortened, not lengthened, and we only had seven years left to begin with. Right? We had one week of prophecy left when all things would be complete. We're in the generation of the fig tree. We have been for over 70 years. In fact, the 70 years have been complete. And then where are we since then? Well, the 1260 days, which in this student's humble opinion, very well, very well could mean we're at the halfway point of that week. Which means we're in the season, hear me well, and don't put words in my mouth. It would mean, if, if that's correct, we're in the season for the appearance of the Antichrist. And looking around me now, and we're going to get into Revelation here in a little bit, and conditions on the ground, and the ships and the sailors are far off with their merchandise that they can't get to shore. Revelation chapter 18, that's already happening. That's connected directly with the judgment of Babylon and the last hour. So it could possibly be much later than many think. We shouldn't be worried about 2029 or 2028 or whatever right now. We better be, we better, what did Christ say? Can you guys not stay awake for even one hour? We better stay awake. And that's all I'm going to say. No, I'm not going to share that chart because of the potential for deception. Let's stop looking so far down the road and look at what's right in front of us. Christ told us if he didn't shorten the days, no flesh could be saved. And there's no way we're going to be able to hold out for years and years and years with the way they're bearing down on this mark of the beast thing. There's just no way. It, he had to shorten the days, and he did shorten the days. And it's written that once that war in heaven happens, and we're going to cover this, and he's kicked out, and he's him and his angels are ejected onto this earth, woe unto the inhabitants of the earth, because he's full of fury, be, meaning he works fast. He's going to work very, very fast. Doesn't mean he's blowing us up. He's he's working in a at a furious pace. Because he knows his time is short. We don't know how much it was shortened to. Christ didn't tell us that. He told us we wouldn't know the day or the hour. Only the season. That's it. That's as close as we're going to get. But to stay awake and watch. That's what we were instructed to do. And that's what we have to do. And stop worrying about years and years and years from now. And stay awake right now. That's extremely important. Stay awake right now. Or else, 
you could very well wind up being deceived, and we don't want that, do we? I don't want, I don't, I wish that wouldn't happen to anybody, but it doesn't matter what I wish. It's going to happen the way it's written, and it's written that the whole world, those whose names aren't written in the Lamb's Book of Life, are going to whore after the beast. That, that second one, after it's healed, remember the first one receives a deadly wound, we're going to go into all this, and then the dragon heals it. He's the dragon. He speaks like the lamb slain. No. I mean, he speaks like the dragon, but he looks like the lamb slain. It's going to fool a lot of people. He looks like the lamb slain, but he speaks like the dragon. He's going to say a lot of things you're expecting him to say because of what's taught from the pulpit nowadays. Because of what you hear coming, all those warnings written in the Bible. But still the preachers won't stop preaching lies and van, a vain vision. That's written in so many places. So many. And we've covered a bunch of them and we'll cover a bunch more. We'll keep covering it. We will keep covering it. That vain vision. They daubed with the with the mortar and they daubed at Ezekiel 13. Okay, let's, uh, let's, let's crack our... And in case you're wondering, the Blue Letter Bible, that is not my website. I just use it. It's a good tool. It's my site of preference, but it's not mine, and I'm no way connected to it. I don't know who owns it, and I don't never ask for donations. They do, but I don't. But it's a good it's a good study tool, and I use it. So, with All that right, being said, away we, we back again, as promised. Let's cover a little bit of scripture to document what I said at the uh, opening monologue. Matthew twenty four twenty two. And except those days be shortened, there should be no flesh saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. This isn't a maybe. Is that the only place he said it? No. Our, our, our Savior said this again. And except the Lord has shortened those days, no flesh should be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen. See, not the called, the chosen, for the sake of there's a called and there's a chosen. All those people will be saved, but they're, they're distinctly different. The elect and the very elect, if you will. The called and the chosen. Many are called, but few are chosen. Those that he hath chosen, he hath shortened the days. Now I'm very aware uh, oh and somebody said yeah Matthew 24 says a generation's 80 years. No it doesn't say that. It, it talks about the generation of the fig tree and yes we should be quite aware of the generation of the fig tree but it does not say it's 80 years. Another thing I'm aware yes yes I'm aware of Psalm 90 and it says 70 or if by strength, 80 years. Putting it somewhere in between. Somewhere in between the 70 year mark and the 80 year mark. But it doesn't say where at in there, does it? We're three and a half years now past the 70. Aren't we? May 14th, 2018 marked 70 years. Determined against Jerusalem were complete. We're three and a half years and just a smidge more than that, past that now, aren't we? Okay. So we're definitely somewhere between the 70 and the 80 year period. In the middle of the week of Daniel, I can't help but think that that's significant. Now, there's something else. Were we warned about this over and over again? Oh, yes, we were. Therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour you think not the Son of Man cometh. And I might add to that, and I would be correct in adding, and so does Antichrist. If we go kicking the can down the road years and years and years from now, we won't be watching for the enemy right now. What's the purpose of a watchman to watch for the enemy? And it, it, but the the warnings go on. Be ye therefore ready, the Son of Man cometh at an hour you think not. How about this one, Luke twelve, forty six? Oh, I meant to mention. 
those of you on Podomatic, the link to the video version is, is and always will be, is if, as long as I don't forget to put it there, in the description of each episode. So you, if you prefer, you can study along with me on your screen. That would be preferable. Anyway, I'm reading Luke 12, 46. The Lord of the servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in sunder, and will appoint him a portion with the unbelievers. You don't want that, do you? You don't want... Th this, this is pretty strong. Can't we stay awake for even one hour? Chicky. Truth of the gospel might continue with you. There's about the hour. Here we go. When he'd opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for the spe There's a half of the hour. There's something significant about the halfway point of the hour of temptation, of that last hour. Prepared for an hour, a day, a month, and a year to slay the third part of men. Spiritual deaths. Ezekiel 37 comes to mind. Uh... They're spiritually dead, just dry bones. You know, now might be a good time before we get into the beast, the first beast, the deadly wound, and the second beast, and the, the dragon and his reign, and he, the dragon gave great power and authority to the beast. Plus, uh, this is a war, right? Very much so. It's good to know to identify the enemy and take inventory of what weapons we have available to us. Inventory, what we have, and a battle plan for victory because we do have the victory. But we have to know this, it's in Ephesians chapter 6. So let's go there now. Oh. If it will let me. And I do not think that uh, it's the book of Revelation, the great uncovering, the unveiling, the making known. Something that was concealed is made known. That's what Revelation means. Or the Greek word apocalypse. You hear that thrown around loosely a lot. It, it means the same thing. To uncover, to reveal, or to make known. That's what apocalypse, the Greek word apocalypse, means. So let's go with Ephesians chapter 6 once again. I do not think it's an accident because the book of Revelation reveals that Satan's number is six. There are three of them, but how many trumps do we have? Right? We have trumps, we have vials, we have seals. Six, six, six. And just a side note, you can do this. This is your own little homework assignment, if you will. Go read about the sixth seal. Go read about the sixth trump. And go read about the sixth vial of wrath. And see if those conditions described aren't pretty much all present right now. Dare I say, at this hour. Those conditions mentioned in six, six, and six are very, they're here. They're here. It's here. It's written. Ephesians chapter 6. Satan's number. Children, obey your parents. We're going to read to cover the whole trap chapter. Some of it will move pretty fast. Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment. And with promise. And he's going to tell you what that promise is. Verse 3. That it may be well with thee and thou may livest long on the earth. There's the promise. If, if you honor your, your parents. Your mother and your father. And ye fathers provoke not your children to wrath. But bring them in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. You know me. I sometimes struggle with pronunciations. Five, servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh. In this modern age, this would be your employ who employs you. Okay? Be the best employee you can be. If they tell you to do something, just do it. Don't crumble. With fear and trembling and singleness of your heart as unto Christ. 
be a good employee. Or if you're you're like me and an independent contractor, do, do just try to get along and do what you're asked to do in the course of work, even if you disagree with it. That's what this is asking you to do, okay? In more ancient times, yes, it was talking about the slave and his master. Yeah, of course. But in the modern times, we're wage slaves, aren't we? We work for money, and it's the same applies, so it hasn't been done away with. Not with eye service as men pleasers, but as servants of Christ doing the will of God from the heart. Brothers and sisters, that's what I always try to do. And believe me, and I'm constantly reminded, or often, I strike the word constantly, I'm often reminded that the way I present things isn't the norm, it isn't the standard, it isn't orthodox. That doesn't mean I'm not familiar with what's coming out of orthodox, the accepted norms. But how many times have I mentioned this to you? Those guys are worried about the collection plate. I'm not. I don't want your money. I can tell you the truth because I don't teach for money. I don't teach for gain. Okay? I don't, I'm not trying to get any. I don't want your money. That way I can tell you the truth. I don't have to... I don't have to... Be orthodox. I don't have to stay within the confines of what the denomination would have me teach. I didn't go to seminary where they strip away truth and replace it with tradition. I didn't. I know. And I'm not going to. Why? Well, here, it told you right here. Not with eye service as men pleasers, but a servant of Christ doing the will of God from the heart. I'm going to do it the best I can possibly do from the heart. With doing, with good and doing service to, as to the Lord and not to men. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 7. Let's read that again. With good and good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men. So I, I don't try to be... I'm not sitting here teaching to try to tickle anyone's ears or tell them what they want to hear. Oh, brothers and sisters, don't worry. You won't be here when that beat old Antichrist Christ is here. You're going to be gone. That's a lie. You're going to be here. You know how you escape the hour of temptation? You know how the escape that God gave us? Knowing the truth. Knowing that he comes first and recognizing him knowing his method of operation, knowing what tools and weapons you have at your disposal and using them. Let's keep going. Eight, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or whether he be free. God slay, slay pardon me, God's promises apply to, yes, even a slave. Some of the apostles, didn't they refer to themselves as slaves to Jesus Christ? That's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. You could be a communist and this applies to you, a bond person. doesn't matter. God's making you this promise. It takes courage to, to be a Christian and live in a communist country. I understand that. It takes great courage. But there's great promises attached to it, isn't there? We just read one of them. And ye masters do the same unto them, forbearing, threatening, knowing that your master is also in heaven. Neither is there a respect of persons with him. It doesn't matter if you're a king. He got our Father in heaven does not respect your person, your office that you may hold, however important you might think that you are. That doesn't carry any weight. It's what it, it's. Are you a good servant or aren't you? Do you trust the Lord or don't you? Do you have faith or don't you? Do you do, you do keep his commandments and statutes and ordinances as best you can or don't you? 10. Family, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. There, doesn't say cower with fear. Be strong. Put on, here we go. Now we're going to get to our weapons. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. My brothers and sisters, let me ask you this. If you're not going to be here on this earth when he is ejected upon it, the war in heaven happens. 
and he's him and his angels are cast down here. If you're not going to be here, why would they? Why would this be here? Hmm. I don't see any room here to fly away. You're going to be here, you, and we're instructed to. This is what we're instructed to do. Verse twelve. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers and against the rulers of darkness. Excuse me, of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The enemy identified. And he will take the highest place. He's got the two horns, right? The one horn is all political and economic power. The other horn is that of education, including the high priest. Instruction to the children. He's got both horns. He's the little horn that comes up in the middle of them. Got it? Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be there. We, we got that. Stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth and having the breastplate of righteousness. Let's talk about this for a minute. Verse 14. What's it mean to have your loins girded? That's what holds your britches up. How embarrassing would it be to be in the middle of a heated battle and your pants fall down? Hmm? Shameful, wouldn't it? That would be very embarrassing. That's what's going to happen to those that reject the truth. The truth that you will be here. How is that man of sin, Satan, revealed? By the brightness of Christ's coming. That would be in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. That would be impossible if he wasn't already here. That would, that would not be possible unless he was already here. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Yes, we should be very familiar. Because it's the thousand year reign. What was his historical type? The peaceful reign of Solomon and the temple. Yeah, that, that was the historical type for this thousand year reign of Christ. It's going to be peace. We're going to learn the difference between holy and unholy, clean and unclean. And the whole land will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord. That's written and so it will be. No man's going to say to you, know the Lord. They're not going to be asking that anymore. That's written too, by the way. And above all, taking the shield of faith, wherein you shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. So faith is very important, isn't it? Hebrews chapter 11 is a, a, a good chapter for further study on this verse. Then take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. This one we have to stop for a minute. The helmet of salvation, where does the helmet go? On your head. In Revelation, it is revealed that some have the seal of God in their forehead. That's the knowledge of this truth we just talked about. Others wind up with the mark, which is deception. So you're, it's going to be one or the other. Either you have this helmet on your head and the seal of, and the truth sealed in your mind from studying God's word, chapter by chapter and verse by verse, and study it, do your homework, dig into the languages, or you're going to wind up deceived, one or the other. So there your helmet on your head, where your brain is, protecting you and there's your salvation because you know the difference you know the difference between the imposter Christ the one that comes disguised as an angel of light that's written to Paul taught it Satan himself don't marvel because he comes I know the King James didn't translate it disguised but that's what the word is it says transformed it's disguised dig into the language and you'll see the Greek you'll find out that I'm telling you the truth Pray, praying always with prayer and supplication in the Spirit. I, 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 let's go back to 17. This is important. Revelation chapter 19 will tell you the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. The sword that wounds that beast, that first beast, is the word of God coming to pass exactly as it's written. And as those things come to pass, and things are in a big mess now, aren't they? Just like we were told they would be. With the sailors standing afar off and they can't get that merchandise to shore. That's happening. That's one of the many things happening. And it's the beginning of the wound 
with the wounding of this first beast is in progress now. Just like we were told it would be. In the first chapter of Revelation, we learn that out of mouth, out of Christ's mouth comes a two-edged sword that cuts both ways. It can cut both the non-believer or this group of believers or would-be believers that, that we just read here a minute ago got put in the camp of the unbeliever because they wouldn't accept the love of the truth. So it will cut them too. The word of God will, if you're looking to fly away, that word of God is going to cut you too, even if you claim to be a Christian. Even if you are a Christian. But if you won't let go of the lie, then the truth is going to cut you. Come, that comes out of Christ's mouth, the word of God. That's the sword. We'll learn in Revelation, the enemy also has a sword. His word. He has things he tells us. That they're lies, but he, he, he tells us lots of lies. As for me, the utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. God, Paul did speak boldly. you got to give him credit for that. For which I am ambassador in bonds that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. He's saying, see, that's good and I should speak boldly. 21, but that ye also may know my affairs and how I do, I don't know how to say that word, Tishish, a, a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord shall make known to you all things, whom I have sent unto you the same purpose, that you may know our affairs, that you might comfort your hearts. Peace be unto the brethren, with love and faith in God and the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. Hey, and I will add to that. Amen. That's it for this episode. Have a great day. Until next time, signing off.